Hey everyone, today's video is a follow-up of my previous video where I covered how to upload a .crypto website onto your .crypto domain. So if you missed that video, go ahead and check out the link down below in the YouTube description. Watch that video first and then come back to this video because if not, this video is not going to make any sense at all. But if you were following along and you were able to upload this template onto your .crypto domain, awesome you are in the perfect position to get started. In order to edit these files, as you can see, I'm editing the index.html file. You don't necessarily need to know any HTML or CSS, but it would help if you did. But if you don't, all I'm gonna do in this tutorial is to show you how to edit this text, how to edit this text, how to add an image here, maybe an image in this background here. And then once you get those ideas of how to actually change these different types of texts, you can go ahead and edit the rest of the text yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to put a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to help you figure out how to make this template your own so that everything on here is related to you and doesn't have any of this generic uh, lorem ipsum text. But as you can see in this template, there are a lot of different things missing. And these are images. What the template gives you is these default thumbnail images where you can then replace them with your own images. And I'll show you how to download images from a free location that you don't have to give any credit or anything. And I'll go through all the steps of how to link the images. I won't cover really what is going on behind the scenes. I'll just tell you what to type. And if you follow along, you should have your own images up here on your own website within no time. So the files for this template are down below in the description. And once you have the files downloaded, and you also have your text editor downloaded, I use Visual Studio Code because it looks like this, and it allows me to install extensions that then allow me to develop a lot easier. If all of this makes no sense to you, then I highly recommend checking out a text editor called Sublime. Uh, I think it's either Sublime Text 3 or, yeah, Sublime Text 3. Go to sublimetext.com slash three. You can download it for your environment just to get up and running. But once you have your text editor up and running, let me just close this out here to show you. You go to File Open. And for me, this is the template that we're using in today's video. So I'm going to click Ethereal. Click Open so it opens the entire folder. And then I'm going to click on the index file right here. And then because I have a certain extension installed called, let me click over here on this tab for extensions, called Live Server. You're going to click Install. All this is going to do is allow you to come back to your index file and click on this Go Live button down at the bottom. And that will pop open your new window here. So every change you made will be automatically reloaded. You don't have to click Save on this file and then head back here and refresh. It will automatically do that for you. So, to give you an example, I'm going to change Hello My Name is Ethereal to Hello My Name is Michael. Save that, see it automatically reloaded, and it automatically had my changes saved. So, what we're going to do for this tutorial is I'm going to show you how to edit this text and this text first. So, heading back to Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text 3, let's go ahead and keep Hello My Name is Michael. That works. And then let's go ahead and change this text down here. To do that, I want to show you right here. This is bold. It's wrapped in a strong tab. So anywhere you want text to be bold, you're going to wrap it in an open strong tag, and then you're going to close the strong tag after the text you want bolded. So let's go ahead and from the beginning of this paragraph tag, we're going to select this, this word here. We're going to scroll all the way to the end and we're going to select that so we are going to get rid of that paragraph text completely. And I'm going to save the file and I'm going to come back here and you can see that that's no longer there. So let's go ahead and fill this out with something that makes sense to us. Um, let's go ahead and put this website is built using a free uh, HTML template called Ethereal and 
is located on a .crypto domain. Check out the video in the YouTube description for more details. Okay, so once I save this file, I'll head back over here and you'll see this new text has been added to my template. Hopefully this is making a little bit of sense. If not, go back and really pay attention to where I'm clicking and what I'm talking about to update the text so that it doesn't break the existing design. Because for an example, if you deleted this closing paragraph tag and you saved it, it may look fine here, but it's technically not correct. So you wanna always make sure that everything you have as far as the HTML tags goes is in their exact order. You do not wanna be removing them if you don't know what you're doing yet. So now that we have this, this H1 or heading one tag and this paragraph describing what our site is all about, let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. You can see right here, this PIC01, images PIC01. Now, if I had to guess where this image was, it would be pretty tricky to figure out, okay, images slash PIC01, this source is looking for a folder or a directory, and then inside this images directory, you should find a PIC01.jpg. So over here on our left, if yours looks like this, and you're like, well, where are all of my files? In Visual Studio Code, you can click on this button up here, the Explorer, and that'll show you all of your files. So this image here is located in Images, PIC01. Right here, we have an Images folder. I'm gonna expand that, PIC01. That is that image. So if we head back to the website, this is that image right here. So if you wanted to change this image with an image of your own, you would either have to replace this PIC01 by downloading an image that you want, or you could add another image here, whatever name you want, and then make a reference to that image name here. So for the sake of this tutorial, what I'm gonna do is I'm not going to overwrite any of these other images. I'm gonna add a new image to this images folder, and then I'm gonna reference it right here. So if you notice, this is a vertical image. So let's go ahead and go to a free website called Pexels. So once you're on Pexels.com, and I'll put a link to all these different uh, free image libraries down below in the YouTube description, we're gonna go ahead and just click, um, we're gonna type in nature. I think nature is a really good way to create visually stunning websites. So up here in Pexels, you can click on this orientation tab and you can click the vertical tab so it only shows you vertical images. One thing you should keep in mind is that if you download any of these files, the file size will probably be fairly large because these are high resolution images. Ideally, you would resize them or use a program like tinypng.com to lower the file size but keep the resolution. But for today's tutorial, all I'm gonna show you is how to download the images and then where to save them so that you can use them in your project. So let's take this image here, you right click it, or you could click on this to view the larger image, whatever you feel more comfortable doing. And then you're gonna right click this and click save image as. And then you go into your ethereal folder, and then you go into your images folder. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to trees, and I'm gonna get rid of that, trees.jpg, okay? We're gonna put it in the same area where this pic01.jpg is. So let's go ahead and save that. I head back to our Visual Studio Code or our code editor. And in Visual Studio Code, you have this refresh button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And now you can see that this trees.jpg is located inside of the images folder. Now in order to reference the trees.jpg file, all we have to do is replace this pic01 with trees, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and save that file and go back to our template, and as you can see, that image is now located right here where we wanted it to go. Okay, so let's try another image. Let's do a horizontal image this time. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to look in the code for this text here, said etium whatever. Okay. So let's go back here to the code, scroll down, and you can see that code is right here. So in order to change that background image, we're going to have to replace this pic02 with a horizontal image. So let's go ahead, I'm going to X out of that, I'm going to scroll back up to the top of pixels, I'm going to click horizontal instead, so I'm only showing horizontal photos, and I'm going to click this very first one here, I'm going to right click, click save image as, and I'm going to save it in the same directory as trees, I'm going to call it lightning, and I'm going to get rid of that E in there, save that image, as you can see, lightning is now located here in my files, and I'm going to replace pick 2 with lightning. Light, that's not how you spell it. Lightning. I'm going to save the file and head back here to my template. As you can see, this background is now using this new image. It's really that simple. Let's do one last thing. I really don't think you're going to want to include all of these, all of these images here. If we scroll down back in our index file, Let's see, it looks like these are where all of the images are. It's kind of tricky, and if I can break this up a little bit more, let me separate all of this code so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so right here you have an anchor tag, which just makes this image clickable, and this is the file path to the full image, and then for this image tag, this is the file path for the thumbnail. So with this thumb01, I can only assume that that's this image, and I can actually confirm that by inspecting, yes, thumbs01, this is the thumbnail, and then th this is the link to the full image. And what that does is, when in this particular example, when you click, you can see this hand is here. When you click on this, it's going to show you the, t the big image. So this is the thumbnail, you click on it, it shows you the big image. So. If you go back to your code, this is the thumbnail, this is the one that you're going to click. And then when you click, it's going to take you to this image here. And so all you have to do is have two different images. You have one that's small and one that's big. The one that's small, you would just update this path here. And the one that's big, you would update this path here. And if you want me to show you, I'll do that really quickly right now. So let's go back to here. And you can see that this is horizontal, so I'm going to put a horizontal image in here. You know what, let's choose this image. I'm going to go ahead and right click, save this image as. I'm going to save it as uh, forest. And I'm going to put that. So right now we're in the images directory. I'm going to go inside of the gallery directory. And then I'm going to put this in folds. So we've got forest in the foals directory. And then for the sake of this tutorial, instead of decreasing the file size for this to create a thumbnail, I'm just going to save this image as again, but instead of putting it in the foals directory, I'm going to go back into the thumbs directory and say forest small. Okay, And then we're going to head back to Visual Studio Code. So, images and then inside of images, you can see here, gallery, we have foals and thumbs. In the thumbs, we put forest small, okay? You can see that here, forest small inside of the thumbs directory. And inside of the foals directory, we have forest. So right up here in the foals directory, we have forest. And we save that and go back to the site. You can see that now, okay, we have a small image here. When you click on it, you see the full large image here. And that's really all there is to it to updating your template. You can go and you can either keep all of these images here, you can add your own, or if you want, you can actually remove these sections in case you only have three images that you want to use. So let's say you only have three images you want to use, and you want to get rid of the rest of these. So we have one, two, three. So this was our first one right here. This one is our second one, and this one is our third one. So in order to get rid 
of this one and all the rest of them. Okay, pay attention here. I'm going to separate it out so you can see it. Here's the fourth image. And then we have number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. So in order to remove all those images, you're going to select at the very beginning of the line where it says Foles 04, right here, and you're going to press the shift key so that you can select all of this text here. And then right here at the very bottom where it says image number nine, you're going to come to the closing of this anchor tag and you're going to select all of this code right here and you're going to hit delete. Then when you save the site and reload the page, you'll notice that you only have three images left. And the last thing I wanted to cover before I go over how to remove this extra stuff here that you do not need, we're actually going to get rid of this contact form because it's not actually going to work the way that we have this website set up here. So let's go ahead and remove this contact form. And what I'm going to do is scroll down here so you can see contact here, which I'm assuming is the same contact. I'm going to go ahead and click on Well, you can see there's a form here. So the first thing we could do is click on, at the start of this form, go all the way down to the bottom of the form, highlight all of it, and delete it. But then you can see that there's this actual div here that we're also going to delete. And then once we save the file, it'll reload for us. You can see that that form is gone. And now you can replace all of these links with your own social media links. You can replace this text with maybe an email you have, or a phone number, or a, an address, whatever it is that works for you. And then to close out this tutorial, I know this tutorial has been kind of all over the place. If you don't know HTML or CSS, it might have been very confusing. But ultimately, I'm just trying to show you that you can put anything you want on your .crypto website, and it really doesn't have to be that elaborate or that difficult. For me, I took a free template and I replaced all the content. I added, I embedded a, a YouTube video here. I added some buttons here, some text here. It's really not an elaborate site, but I just want to show you how to get started making your own dot crypto website. It's actually a lot easier than you think. And if you missed my previous video, go ahead and check that out. It'll show you exactly what to do with your files once you've completed everything. You've added all your images and text and everything. It shows you exactly where to put it so that you can get it on your own .crypto domain name. And if you don't have a .crypto domain name yet, I will put a link down below where you can buy one. It's from a website called Unstoppable Domains. So to close this video, I'm going to go ahead and search for this elements area and I'm going to delete this orange background all the way to the very end of the site. I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for this elements text by scrolling down here. Okay, so here's elements. And you can see here's a comment that says panel. So I would assume that if I take this area here and scroll all the way down to the bottom, what I'm doing for is I'm looking for that close section right here. We're going to hold down the shift key and select all of this code here and hit delete. Then we're going to hit save, go back to the site. It's going to automatically reload because we have the live server installed. And there you go. There is our entire website. You can see we changed this image. We changed this text and this text. We also changed this background image. We also got rid of a lot of these excess images that were here and we got rid of the contact form and the remaining section that was over here on the right. If you have any questions, feel free to put a comment down below. I will get to you as soon as I can, and I will try to do my best to give you as much information as possible so that you can build your own .crypto website, get it up and running with your own custom images, your custom text, and everything else just like that. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. I will see you guys in the next video.